Welcome to the Small Business Center. Um, my name is Rehan Abdul Mughni. I will be your presenter today. Um, today we are going to discuss building a business website in an hour. I'm going to do a very short presentation about what we are doing today and then we will get into the actual building of the webinar. So I'm going to, or, or sorry, uh, actual building of the website. So I'm going to actually build a website in hopefully about an hour. So our agenda for today is this why we are going to use WordPress to build a website. So we are going to use that as a system. We are going to discuss a little bit about what the minimum things you need to have a business website as well as what the requirements for the WordPress is. And then we are going to get into the installation of the WordPress, which will be about five, maybe six minutes. It's going to be slightly technical, but that's about the only place that you will find it to be technical. Personally, I don't think it's very technical, so don't let that scare you. Um, but there are going to be a couple of things that I'm going to talk about that you may not be familiar with, but don't, don't worry too much about it. Don't get too, too worried about it. Um, and then once we have installed the WordPress, then I'm going to show you how to build a very simple website. We are going to add some pages. We are going to add some blog posts. And then we are going to optimize that website by adding some plugins and some themes. And after that, uh, I will open it up for questions and answers. But as, as we go through the webinar, uh, the presentation, if you have any questions, you don't have to wait till the end. You can ask them at any time. I just may not be able to answer them right away. So why are we using WordPress? WordPress is a very easy to use content management system. You may hear that term by other uh, website developers and designers, either content management system or a CMS. Essentially what that means is that it keeps the two most important things in your website separate from each other. Your content and your design. What that means is that if you change your design of your website and at, at any time, it will not have an impact on the content of the of that website. And the same way, if you change any content on the website, it will not impact any of your design components. Generally speaking, that is true, but you will find out that it is not 100% correct when you change, especially when you change the design, it sometimes messes things up a little bit, not a whole lot, just a little bit, and you just need to be aware of that and be able to go back and fix that. WordPress is also very extendable. You can have a lot of plugins and themes that extends the WordPress beyond, far beyond the basic out of the box software that it comes with that we're going to install today. Some of these plugins and themes are free. Some of them you can buy them from anywhere from $10 to some that cost about $500. So the prices range in a variety. Um, <clears throat> What are the plugins, plugins and themes? Themes, let's start with that. That's the look and feel of your website. That is the design of your website. So for example, where your logos go, where your sidebars are, where is your headline, where are your navigation buttons? That's the look and feel of your website and that's all included in a theme. A plugin is something that you add to be able to extend the functionality of your website. Some of that may be visible to the visitors of your website. Some of them are not visible to them. They work in the background. So for example, when you went to our website, smallbusinesscenter.com, you notice that it is a membership based website. And there's a lot of things that are happening in the background for the membership site that you as a visitor won't see. Uh, we also have a plugin on our, members, on, our, on our website that I'm going to show you how to install today, which, is, uh, which optimizes your website for SEO, for search engine optimization. So a visitor to your website will not see that plugin, but in the background, it optimizes your website so that search engines can easily um, index you and find you uh, your website better. So there are things that plugins do that are not always visible to your visitors, but it still makes your website better. And themes are things that will help you make your design better. Now with both plugins, plugins and, and themes, as I said, there are hundreds 
hundreds if not thousands of those available out there but if you don't like them you can make your own or if there's something that's not available out there you can make your own you can make your own for your own website and then you can either give it away to other people or you can also sell it if you like and the last point is that the WordPress out of the box is actually pretty optimized for search engines there are things that webs WordPress does right away without you doing anything to it that is optimized for search engines and in particular for Google so those are the main three reasons why I prefer WordPress over a different content management system when you have a website for business well this is true for any website but certainly true for business websites there are two things that you absolutely need. The first is a domain name and a domain name comes in a variety of different uh, ways. Uh, you are all probably familiar with what's called a top level domain name. It's either a, a website that's nn.com, .org or .net. Uh, those were the original three domain names that were that were developed way back when in, in I think in the early 90s if not before that but then there's also country level domain names so the, every country in the world has a domain name associated with it so for example US is .us, UK is .uk, Canada is .ca most countries, well I shouldn't say most countries, but many countries also have a second level domain name. So in the UK you have a .co.uk, you have .gov.uk, you have .org.uk. In the US every state has a has a sub-level domain name. So for example, uh, .ca stands for California.us, not Canada in this case. Uh, and, and, and then there are other types of sub-level domain names or sub-country level domain names uh, as well. And then there are generic level domain names that you may be familiar with such as .info and .name. And if you are if you have been hearing the stories over the last several months, uh, the generic level domain names are going to accept explode over the next few years uh, with things like dot google dot pepsi dot amazon dot whatever right because they have opened it up and lots of companies have applied to own a generic top level domain name so you will see an explosion of that over the few next few years why is that important for a business website for you to know there are a variety of reasons by default at this point this may change in the future but at this point there are certain domain extensions that are favored by search engines over other ones. So for example, if you have a domain name that ends in .com or .us or .uk, in other words, either a top-level domain name or a top country level domain name you're more likely to be better in search engine or in search engine ranking than if it's a generic level domain name like a .info and .name. The other thing you need to keep in mind is also the authority that people are going to uh, put in your company uh, depending on your on what your generic level domain name is. So for example, if you are a UK based company or for or rather if you sell to the UK population, you should actually have a have a uh, domain name that is .co.uk, not necessarily .com. Uh, .coms are not as trustworthy by the people in the UK as uh, .co.uk are considered because it's a country level domain name. They have more trust in this because they believe, feel that the company is within the country and they can deal with it. But the .com, that could be anywhere in the world. They don't know if that's a trustworthy company as more than if it was a .co.uk. On the other hand, on the opposite side of that, in Canada, most Canadians prefer to do business with a website that ends in .com rather than in .ca because .ca is just not as widely available here right now. So most people believe that .com probably provides a better service, a company with a website address of .com than with a .ca. So keep those things in mind when you're developing or when you're trying to figure out what your domain name should be. The second thing that you definitely need for your business website is a hosting server. Now you can certainly host it in your own on your own computer on your own laptop if you want but if it's a business website that you want to make sure that it is a high performance server. Now I'm not going to get technical into what 
types of servers there are, but generally speaking, you will have two types of servers. They either will come in a Unix, Linux Unix flavor, or they will come in a Windows flavor. Windows, generally speaking, are going to be more expensive because there's a license associated with the Windows server, whereas Linux servers are free, so they're usually cheaper. Also, you will find that if you're going to install a lot of applications other than WordPress, Linux, generally speaking, will support them better than Windows will. That's not to say that Windows are not better than Linux, but I'm just telling you what's out there today. This may change over the next few years. I don't know. Um, but something that you need to keep in mind when you're, when you're thinking about who do you want to host with. Along with the business requirements, you also want to make sure that whichever hosting company you go with uh, can fulfill the requirements of the WordPress. And there are two things that you need for WordPress. One is PHP version 5.2.4 or above, and a MySQL version 5.0 and above. You don't really need to know what these things are, but when you are talking to a host provider, make sure that they support these two software with these two versions. If they have that software but a lower version, WordPress probably will not work very well. Optionally, if they have a cPanel and a Fantastico, you will be able to install WordPress better and quicker and easier, but you don't need them. And you only, if you, if you have it or you don't have it, you will only need it for the first time. As I said, it will take us five minutes to install WordPress. After that, you don't need it. And today, we are going to talk about the installation of the WordPress. So if your server does have a cPanel or fan and Fantastico, uh, the only thing you would need from your hosting company is your database information, and I'll show you what that means. If you don't have cPanel or Fantastico, then you will need the following uh, things from places which I have obviously noted down here. You would need the WordPress files which you will get from wordpress.org. They are free. You need an unzip utility. You can either get a WinZip or a WinRAR. I have noted the WinRAR URL here. That is also free. You need an FTP software which is file transfer protocol software. What you will need that for is you need to transfer the files from your computer to your server computer and I use FileZilla which is also free but there are many other ones out there as well. And then you would need a database information and the FTP information from your host company, which they will provide you at, uh, shouldn't that be a problem. All of the things that I have listed here right now do not cost any money, so you should be, it should all be free to you. Um, so Alvin asked if most website hosting companies have those requirements. Every website hosting company that I have come across does have that requirement, but I obviously cannot speak for every hosting company. Um, but but generally speaking, if a hosting company does not have that requirement, uh, does not have PHP and MySQL, um, my I, I wouldn't want to do business with it, with them because MySQL and PHP and PHP are not used just by WordPress. There are many, many, many different applications that you use those two things. And if they don't provide that or service that, then um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to worry about that. So, so yes. Okay, so those are the things. Let's get us started with today's um, building the website. Let me go and change that real quickly. Okay, so the first thing we, before I get started with installing WordPress, let me show you what cPanel and Fantastico looks like. Now, I don't have either cPanel or Fantastico on my website, so I'm going to show you a demo on somebody else's website, which is HostGator. Now, I'm not uh, recommending or not not recommending HostGator either way. I don't I don't host my services with HostGator. I don't have any first-hand experience with them, so I cannot tell you whether they're good or not. I have heard a lot of good things about them, but I'm not either recommending or not recommending them. That's your choice. But I'm using them only here as a as a demo to show you what it looks like. Uh, let me just go back so you can see the screen.
Okay, this is what generally speaking a C panel would look like. C stands for control, so it's a control panel. This is what you will see your server looks like if you had C panel installed. It makes your life easier unless you are a geek like me, in which case we don't like to use these things. But um, but what fantastic uh, what cpanel will do it comes with two things it comes with mysql database administration as you can see here this will allow you to quickly and easily create your database uh, so f so as i said one of the requirements you need to know is what your database information is and if I clicked on MySQL database here, it's going to ask me what my uh, new database name I want to use. So you can use any name you want to. You can tell them what uh, username you want to use. Again, you can say whatever username you want and what password you want to use. And again, you can use those passwords. Those are the three things you would need for WordPress installation. Database name, database username, and database password. Uh, I'm unfortunately, because this is a demo version, I cannot create the real uh, real information here. Uh, but those are the three things you need, and this is how you will create that in in cPanel. And I believe they do not have Fantastico here installed. Let me just go back. Okay, they don't have Fantastico in, uh, in, installed here, but what Fantastico does is once you have the username and password, you click on one button that says install WordPress. The second thing it asks you is that information about the username and password, and then it installs WordPress automatically. You don't have to do anything other than that. As I said, today we are going to uh, in, uh, spend about five minutes installing WordPress, but if you have Fantastico, you probably can install that in less than one minute. I'm not I'm not exaggerating that. It really is that easy with Fantastico. Uh, but, if, but like me, if you don't have Fantastico, then you have to do other things, and let's go and do that. So first we will go to wordpress.org. And we will click on download WordPress. This is the latest version, 3.4.1. And then, unfortunately, it asks you to click on download WordPress 3.4.1 again. I don't know why it makes you do it twice, but you click on it again, and it will ask you if you want to download it, which we say, yes, we do. <coughs> so it's now downloading that. So it's downloaded my WordPress into my computer. I'm going to... Okay. And I have downloaded the WordPress on my computer, and here it is. And as you can see, that it is in the zipped format. That's why we needed that second software to unzip this file or unzip all of the files within it. So all I'll do is I'll click on that. I will right click on it. When I right click on that file, it gives me several options and I'll say extract to WordPress or extract here either way. It doesn't really matter. And when I do that, it will go through a process for a few seconds and it will extract all of the files within the WordPress. I hope this is not getting too technical for any one of you. Uh, Mari, you didn't see the cPanel screen? Okay, let me go back and w let me just finish this piece bit and let me then go back and show you the cPanel screen, which I hope I can still get to. So this is cPanel. Can everybody see cPanel now? Mari, can you see it? Oh, okay, so you can see that now. Okay, fine, great. So let me go back to our... So we have now unzipped our files and it had put that in WordPress 3.4.1 folder. And if I double click on it, open it, there's a WordPress folder within that. And then if I open that, then there are WordPress files within that. Now we are going to use an FTP software, which I've already given you the address to, and transfer all of these files from my computer into the 
into the uh, into this on the server before I do that I want to show you what uh, website we are going to work with today we are going to work with the website domain name called openhomesmap.com it's a domain name that I own and I'm not doing anything so I'm going to use it as a as a demo purposes and when I go there right now there is nothing on that site right now absolutely nothing it's completely empty so I'm going to now transfer all of these files using an FTP software and as, as I said I use FileZilla for that so I'm going to open FileZilla this is what FileZilla looks like you will put remember how I said if you don't have cPanel and Fantastico then other than the database information you will also need FTP information so you would need the host name you would need the username and you would need the password. You may also need the port number. In most cases, it's port 21, uh, but it may be different for your host provider, and if it is, they, will sh they should tell you what they are. So you would need the host name, username, password, and potentially the port number. Uh, I'm not gonna put that in there today because I already have that in my system. When I click on that, it opens up these files for me. Now, as you can see, on the right hand side are all my files on my server. This is my server wherever it is based. I think in my case it's based in San Jose, California. So on the right hand side I see all of the files on my server. On the left hand side I will see all of the files on my computer. So if I go to my C drive and I go to Oh geez, if I remember it now, uh, bear with me for a second. I was pretty sure it was there, but I guess not. Oh, it's probably under users. Yeah, it's under users. Da, 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 da. And that's where I downloaded. And these are all my files that I had downloaded from WordPress. Now all I have to do is go to my right hand side, find the right um, website that I want to upload that and the reason I say that is because I have a lot of websites as you can see here and the one I want to upload this to is openhomesmap.com so I click on that and all I will have to do is select all of the files on the right on the left hand side hold my mouse key down and drag them to the right hand side and they will transfer them automatically to my server this takes a few seconds longer it probably takes about a minute minute and a half so I know you cannot see me but I'm standing here dancing and trying my best to entertain you which is what we're going to do for a second or two so in the meantime if you have any questions feel free to ask away while it's transferring them files from my ser my computer to my server Okay, so Neha asked if I know anything about GoDaddy as a West web hosting company Okay, how should I answer this question? <laughs> um, I try my best to remain objective when I do these webinars and not either recommend or not recommend any companies uh, because if I don't if I have personal experience with them I would recommend them if I have personal experience with them that hasn't been very positive I usually don't say anything right it's as they say if you don't have anything good to say don't say anything I don't like GoDaddy a lot I I I just they irritate me okay now I know there are a lot of people out there who swear by GoDaddy.com and they do do love them I find their business practices to be obviously they're not illegal they're obviously legal they're not doing anything against the law but I I think from the customer service perspective is not very good uh, I did have experience with them once and for every little thing every little change that you need to make they charge you they charge you anything from five dollars to whatever but they charge you for everything that you want to make changes for um, I personally yeah I take it for what it's worth personally my personal opinion is I do not like GoDaddy but as I said there are other com there are other people who who, who do like them um, so so take it with a with a with a grain of salt uh, what my opinion is uh, so all our files have been transferred to our server and I am going to close my my FTP now because we don't need that anymore so I'm going to disconnect and close 
and we don't need this either but if I now go to my openhomemap.com website and I refresh my page the message that I was getting before disappears and now I get this message which is asking me to um, to create a configuration file. What that means is essentially, remember how, how I said you need a database information? That's one of the things, not one of the things, that's the only thing you would need to create a configuration file. The first time I go through that, I will show you how it's done and it will give me an error message. Don't worry about that, I'm telling you right now because I wanted to make it uh, where if you do run into these issues that many people do run into, you would know how to fix them. So let's create a um, configuration file. As I said, it's asking for the database name, the database username, the database password, and the host provider. And I click on let's go. My database name is open homes map. And my username is demo and demo123, if I remember correctly. My local host name is lo or database host is localhost. This may be different in your case or it may not be different. You have to ask your host provider. In most cases, it is localhost, but in some cases, it is different. Then I'm going to click on submit. By the way, you don't necessarily need the let me just go back for a second. You don't need the table prefix. Uh, you can you can have whatever you want in this field or not have anything in the field. By default, it will put WP. I don't want to get too technical, so I'm not going to go into the explanation of what that does, but it's not very important. So I click on Submit, and it's asking me to generate a WP config PHP files, which I will do, and this is where it's going to give me an error message. So I run the install. And it says that there doesn't seem to be a wp.config file. And there are one of one reason why there it isn't there. And the reason is that my server it does not allow a web browser to write anything on it. Some some web servers do. I don't allow that to happen because I don't want somebody to go into it and hack into my server. So to protect my server, I keep it closed and not keep it open, which means that I forgot actually, I do need to go back to my files, uh, my FTP server again. What that means is that I have to manually go and create that file. Don't worry about it, it's not very difficult, so I'll go back to my home, um, my uh, server for open homes map and there's a file here called wp-config-sample let me go back to my and it's asking for wp-config okay the sample is there only as a sample as an example which is also of course on my on my computer as well so what I will do is I will right click on it and I will rename that to take the sample out. So now it's wp-config.php just the way it wants here, wp-config.php. I hope this is not getting too complicated, but I promise you this is the only complicated bit you will have. Other than that, it should be clear sailing from that. So the first thing we will do is that we will take the file, says sample, wp-config-sample, right-click on it, rename that, and take the word sample out of that. Okay, so now we have a file called wp-config.php. We will click, right-click on this again, and we will open it. Okay, and we will change four things on that. The first thing we will change is where it says database name here. We will call it whatever we called our database. In our case, it was open homes map then it asks me what my username here and I will put under the, keep the make sure that this is under the quotation marks my username was demo and it will ask me for my password and my password was demo one two three and I will just go back and save that's a file save I'll close the file and I will transfer that just grab it and drag it over and transfer that when I do that and refresh my computer, I'm done with the installation. I know that was a bit complicated perhaps. So if there are any questions, I'm going to give you guys to ask me that if there are any questions on that. That was the only difficult part in there. Um, so Stephanie and Mari says that you can only see the file transfer. Um, what bits did you miss?
Okay. Okay. So are there any questions about the file configuration that I just did? Uh, okay. So Stephanie's saying that there seems to be a bit of a delay. I will try and speak a little slower again. I, When I get excited, I tend to speak too fast. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be any questions coming in about the file transfer. So now it's asking us what information about our website that we want. The first thing is, what do we want to call our website? So in our case, it's Open Homes Map. You want to call it whatever your website is, whatever your company name is, whatever it is that you want to call it, it's okay perfectly. Then it's asking you for my username. This is the username that will allow me to administer my website from now on till whenever my website is going to be there for. By default, it says admin. I recommend that you don't use the word admin because it's something that many people do and it makes it very easy for people to hack into your web server so do not use the username admin I'm going to use the username demo but I suggest that you don't use the username demo either because that's also a very common uh, username that people tend to use so use something that is going to be difficult for other people to know but easy for you to remember so you use the you call it the username whatever you want to call it and then you call uh, add your oops add your password and you have to do this twice. It will tell you as you write your password whether it's good or bad. In my case, it's not very good. And then it asks you to enter your email address. It's very important that you get this email address correct if you're doing a lot of communication with people on your website. So make sure that this email address is correct because this is where you're going to get your email address in. The last thing it asks you if you want to allow search engine to index the site and generally speaking you do want them to do that. I am going to uncheck this because I am building this website only for demo purposes. I don't want Google to index it. If it was a real business then I obviously would want that checked. Also even if it was a real business you probably don't want search engines to index it while you're building it. So you may want to uncheck it um, initially but then go back and recheck it once you launch your website for sh for for real and then I'm click on install WordPress and my WordPress is now installed so if I now go back to openhomemap.com voila this is my website this is how easy it is to make a website in WordPress. Now, obviously, we still have a lot of work to do. It's not our website. It is a website, not our website, right? So we obviously have a lot of work to do, and we will go and do that. So to make changes on that, we will go to our domain name, openhomesmap.com forward slash WP dash admin. And this will allow us to administer our website. Remember, we just created a username and password for this, which was demo and demo1234. Don't worry if I'm telling you my password because I'm going to delete the website as soon as this webinar is over. So you won't be able to go back and mess things up anyway. So don't, don't think that I'm telling you my password and that was a bad thing. Okay, Mari, I will uh, I will slow down even a little bit more, and I hope that our recording is being done properly, so you will be able to at least see that. Okay, so when you come to your administration website, the first thing you will see, the first time you go into that, is this welcome screen. It tells you a lot of things that you can go and do. For example, the first time you want to do, how do you do your basics, how do you do add your content, and how do you customize your site. Once you have, once you have read through all of these, and I recommend that you do read through all of these, you can click on this Dismiss button here. And the next time, after you have dismissed it, next time you go in, you will see this as your dashboard. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think there is some lag on the transfer between my computer and the server and then to your computer. So Mari is saying that the lag is just my audio and my screen is not matching. Okay, I, what I will do is I will I will stop between the screens and hopefully that will give you, it will hopefully match up 
between the two. Right, after you have dismissed the welcome screen, the next time you go, it will give you this dashboard which will show you how many posts you have, how many pages you have, how many categories you have, if anybody is commenting on your website, on your blog, things like that. Okay. Today what we are going to do to build our website is four things. We are going to add some pages. We are going to add some blog posts. We are going to add a couple of plugins to enhance our website and then we are going to add a different theme that what you have seen now. So the theme that you have seen now, let me just go back to my website for a second. This is the look and feel of the website, right? Uh, what I will do is I will change the look and feel after we have added the content. But remember that what I said, what content management system does is that when you change the look and feel, it should not impact your content and vice versa. What you would notice that generally speaking that's true, but then there are a couple of issues that you will still face. So I just want to show you that. So let's go back to our admin and the first thing we will do is that we will add some pages to that. So I'll click on pages and when you do that it will show you of all of the pages that you have here. By default when you law when you create a WordPress website it enters a, a generic page called a sample page. We don't need that page but before we delete that I'm going to delete that but before we delete that let me actually show you what that page looks like on the website. So this is our website. This is a sample page. We have a home page which is our blog and we have a sample page. So if I click on sample page it has some content on the sample page as you can see here. But if you scroll down it has a comment box. Now on a blog you probably do want a comment but not on your business pages you don't want comments generally speaking on your business pages but by default you will get a comment on every page whether that's a page or a blog post so the first thing I will do is I'll make sure that when that people will not have ability to comment on a page so let's go back to our administration area and to do to take the comment off the public page of the of the web pages I'll click on settings and discussions so settings and discussions the settings is here when I hover above it I get this open up and then I click on discussions and this box that's checked here that says allow people to post comment on new articles it's by default checked I'm going to uncheck that. By unchecking that, I'm not allowing people to post comments on new articles. Okay. After unchecking that, I will scroll down and I'll click on Save Changes. That's all we need to do at, at this stage. Then I will go to my pages up here. And this now, oh, well, the first thing I'll do is I'll delete that. So I will hover above the page I want to delete and I'll click on Thrash and that's deleted and then I'll click on add new. So because this is a business website I need several pages so I need a page called about us and so I give it a title of about us and I'll click on publish. I'm not going to write any content right now I'm just going to create a page called about us and I will click on, um, on, on publish. When I go back to my pages I now have a page called about us. I'll create another page and I obviously would want a page called contact us. So I'll create another, if I can spell properly. I'll create a page called contact us and I'll click on publish again. Again, I will not add any content to that either. And now we have <coughs> two pages on our website, about us and content us. contact us. What else do we want on our page? We would want, because it's an open home maps website, it's generally speaking about open homes. I'm talking about open homes in a particular region, which is Vancouver, Canada, which is where I am right now. So I will create a few more pages. So I will create a page called Vancouver, which is obviously the city here in Vancouver. And I think I have some content here that I can add. 
Um, I'm just going to copy and paste some content because I don't want to spend time typing this. I'm just going to copy some content that I copied from um, Wikipedia. So I'm going to publish that. And I will add another page of another city, which is Burnaby. And I'll create another. So I'm just going to create a few quick uh, city pages here just so that I can take you to the next stage. And another one, two more I think I need to create. Okay, so I've created several pages now. Let me just publish this. And when, when we go back, <coughs> we will see that we have several pages on our website. And we can go back to our website and see that we have all of these pages showing up here. Right? It's that simple to create some pages. If I click on Vancouver, I will also see that I have some content that I had copied and pasted uh, from Wikipedia. Okay, This is how easy now it is to create pages. However, I don't like the way it's showing me my um, my pages right the way I want to show is I want to show my home page then I want to show Vancouver then I want to show Burnaby and then I want to show White Rock and then Cole Harbor and Yale Town I actually want to show as a drop down menu under Vancouver because these are not cities these are neighborhoods within a city and after that I want to show about us and contact us so essentially what I'm seeing is that the way my navigation is while it's okay it's not the way I want it to appear so let's change that let me go by, back to my dashboard and what I will do is I'll go under appearance because this is how it will appear and I will go under menus okay so appearance and menus and I will create a menu you can call it whatever you like I'm just gonna because I'm not very creative I'm just gonna call it menu you can call it anything you want you create a menu and you click on create menu okay and then you will see that all of the pages that are here you can select any of the page or all of the pages if you want. I'm going to select all of my pages and I'll click on add to menu. And what will happen is that menu that I've created, all of my pages have shown up here. Okay. Now I can simply drag and drop where I want things to appear. So I want appear Vancouver first. So I'll drag that up. Oops. Let's try that again. I hope everybody can see this thing here. I'm having, there we go. So I will go drop Vancouver first. Then I want Burnaby. So I'm going to drop Burnaby next. I'm just having a bit of a hard time dragging and dropping. And then I want White Rock after Burnaby. Then I want Coal Harbor and Yale Town to show up under Vancouver. So when I drop it, I just move it slightly to the right. So Vancouver, slightly to the right, Coal Harbor. And within Vancouver, again, slightly to the right is my Yale Town. Oops. All right, I'm just having a bit of trouble with my drag and drop. There we go. So now my menu should appear my homepage, Vancouver, Coal Harbor, Yale Town, Burnaby, White Rock, Contact Us, and About Us. Okay? And I click on Save the Menu. Now if I go back to my website, you can see... Oops, let me refresh that. Well, it still didn't do it. Oh, sorry, I missed, uh, I missed uh, my fault. Let me go back to Appearance and Menu. The step I missed is I didn't say where I wanted this menu to be appearing. So I want to click under the theme location. My primary menu is menu. Okay, so make sure you do this one step as well. Make sure the primary menu is menu. And by the way, you can create as many menus as you want. If you want every menu on every page to be different, you can do that. So now if you go back to our site, voila, I have 
Vancouver, Burnaby, White Rock, contact us and about us. And if I scroll just a little down here, if I click on Vancouver, it gives me Coal Harbor and Yale Town. I hope that's kind of making sense to everybody. If I'm going too fast, let me know. I know I'm running slightly out of time, so just as a fair warning, we may go a little bit over an hour because I still have a few more things to show you. But that was creating pages. We have created the pages quickly and easily and we know what the pages looks like. You can also copy things from other places and paste them on your page if you want to and they will appear as they are. So for example, if I go to um, Google and what I'm doing is I'm going to go to White Rock and I will go to Wikipedia of the White Rock entry and I will simply copy what's here from Wikipedia including this image file. I'll just copy all of that and I'll go back to my page on White Rock and I'll simply paste all of that in here. Oops, actually, that didn't work because I was in the right. I was under HTML, so let me make sure I go under the visual area and I'll paste it there. And you will notice that everything, including all of the links, including all of the, um, like, white rock is bolded and the image was pasted properly. So when I click on update and I go to my website and I click on white rock, let me scroll down a little bit. You will notice that all of that information was pasted properly, including my image file, including my uh, bolding, my t whatever text uh, uh, edit I have done, and including my hyperlinks. All my hyperlinks are also there as well. So I can copy and paste from other places and it will appear as it was on that place. Now that could be a bad thing or it could be a good thing. In this case it's a good thing, but let's say you did not want all of these links to be or, or already hyperlinked. You want it to be hyperlinked somewhere else, then you obviously it wouldn't be a good thing. Okay, so let me also now show, show you how to do blog posts. The first thing I need to do to write a blog post is actually I need to create a page called blogs. Okay, so I will go ahead and create a new page called blog and I will not add any content here. I will simply publish it and then I will go under post. Now there's a difference between pages and posts. Posts are your blog posts and I'm going to delete the blog post that comes automatically with the website with, with WordPress and I'm going to add a new post. I'm going to call it, actually I have some content for that here as well and I'm going to have, that's the title, the first blog I'm going to post in, top uh, 10 tips for buyers attending open homes and I'm going to simply copy the rest of that information here and publish that. I'm going to add one more post in here. How to prepare your house for sale. That's for the buyers, not the seller, or the for the sellers, not the buyers. And I'm just going to copy the content here. Now the funny thing is, if I go to my website, I will not see any of my blog posts because there are still a few things that I need to do. Actually, I do see a blog post on the home page, which is not where I want it to be. I want it to be under blog, right? So I want another page here called blog, which is what we have just created, but it's not showing up. So let me go to my administration area. Go under settings. It's important that you go under settings and reading. Okay, settings and reading and by default what you're seeing is you're seeing all your blogs on your main page. I don't want that to happen. I want my front page to be Vancouver and my post page to be blog. Okay, so my front page is a page, not a blog, and my blog page is a page called blog. You can obviously name it anything else you want to. That's the first thing I need to do. 
The second thing I need to do is I need to go back to appearance and menus. Remember I've added a blog now? So I need to make sure that it appears in this menu, that page. So I will click on blog, which is the new page I've added, and I'll click on add to menu which is now added here. But I don't want it to be about, after About Us, I want it to be before Contact Us. I click on Save Menu. And when I go back to my site now, I will have a block page as well. So my main page is the Vancouver page as I want it to be, so we are on the main page right now. And if I click on Blog, I will see my two blogs that I have posted in there. Okay. I'm going to post one more blog and the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you something very cool about blogs and this applies to pages as well but it's really helpful for blogs. I'm going to add a new blog and let me go to my con oops, to my content. Where is my content? And I'm going to add this new blog called 5 tips for better home open homes and instead of five I'm just gonna post in three now when I clicked on publish it showed up on my blog but let's say I don't want that to happen I want it to happen sometime in the future so I can actually instead of the default which says publish immediately I can change that to a date sometime in the future so instead of June I'm gonna publish it in August Tenth. Okay. Why would why is this helpful? If you are using blogging as a marketing strategy and you have set aside one day a week or one day a month to write all of your blogs, let's say on the 25th of the month you are going to write five blog posts to appear for next month. You can write all of your blog posts on a certain day or a certain time whenever it is and then you can post them on your administration tool and then you can schedule them to appear in the future right so let's say you have written five blog posts and you want each one of them to appear one week you can schedule them that way and for the next five weeks you don't have to worry about coming up with content now if you're one of those people who can come up with content quickly then obviously you would want to do that and this is not applicable for you but if you're like me and you struggle with coming up with content and you set aside let's say four hours or five hours at a time and you think about what you want to do and you come up with content and you write the content this is a great way to schedule your content for the next month or so and be done with it okay so we have done blogs and we have done pages the last two things I'm going to show you is uh, couple of plugins and one theme. The first plugin that we are going to do is is if you go back to our website and we had a page called contact us. We didn't write any con uh, we don't have any content on that page. It's a blank page. What we want to do is we want to have a form in here that people can fill out and send us uh, an email right so let me go back to our admin area and what we are going to do is we are going to add a plugin that will make it very easy for us to add that form okay so I'll click on plugin and when I click on plugin I get this and by default again couple of plugins shows up I, I'm not gonna get into that right now but up here it says add new so I'm gonna click on that I'm going to search for a plugin called Contact Form 7. I already know this plugin, so I'm going to I'm going to just search for that Contact Form 7. When I click on that, it shows me a whole bunch of different plugins that's available. The very first one is Contact Form 7. I'm going to click on Install now. It's going to ask me if I'm sure if I want to install it. I say yes, and then it will ask me for my information. And I am going to install that. It will go in, it will grab that plugin, it will bring it down to my server automatically, and it will do whatever it wants to do. And then it asks me if I want to activate the plugin. And I say, yes, I want to activate that. And now this plugin 
contact form 7 is on my server I click on settings now contact form 7 is a very very powerful um, uh, plugin you can do any sort of form that you want if you want to do a survey if you want to do a poll if you want to do a very big type uh, con uh, contact gathering information you can do it um, I actually don't I'm not gonna go do that through the whole thing because it is a pretty complicated thing but all I'm gonna do right now by default it comes up with a very very simple form I'm just gonna simply copy that short code that it's giving me I'll go to my page and I'll go to contact us and I will go and simply paste it under HTML okay so I copied it and I pasted it that's all I've done and then I'm gonna update that now if you go back to our website and if I click on contact us we now have a form on our contact us page so as I was saying this is how powerful WordPress is out of the box it can give you a website very quickly but then you can use a variety of different plugins to very quickly enhance and extend your website to have feature sets that will take you days if not weeks to develop right this is just one example that I'm giving you um, so very quickly we now have a contact us form on our website if I go to our to a WordPress website, let me go here again, back to WordPress.org, which from where we downloaded our original files, we downloaded our original files from here, you will notice up here it says plugins. If you click on those plugins, there are over 20,000 plugins. 20,000 plugins available out there. Now, of course, a lot of plugins do similar things, so not you wouldn't need, if you have one contact pay, uh, plugin, you don't need another contact plugin, right? But essentially, there are thousands of plugins that you can use to enhance your website. This is how powerful it is. The other uh, other one that I was going to install was to enhance the SEO, SEO on your website, but I'm not going to do that because we are running short of time so instead of doing that I'm just going to install a theme so you also can get a view of how to install a theme so I'll click on appearance and I'll click on themes so appearance and themes and out of the box it comes with two themes this is the theme that you're seeing right now which is 2011 and there's another one called 2010 if you're wondering why the name it is 20, 2011 and 2010 which was when they developed the team so yeah not very creative I know but if you click on install teams here you can again search for the teams the way you want to and if I go back to my WordPress page where we have clicked on plugins right next to it is teams if you clicked on that you will get over 1500 teams that are available to you by the way all of these ones are free of charge there's no cost for these teams or these plugins there are, are plugins and there are themes that people do charge money for and they are in some cases much better uh, not in all the cases by the way but in some cases they're better and you may want to use one of those the one that I'm going to use today is called if I can just go back it's clean simple white so I'm going to just search for a theme called Clean Simple White, which is this one. I'm going to install now just the way we did it with our um, with our plugins. I'm going to click on Install Now, and it's trying to download the install package. It's taking longer than it should. Let me just bear few more seconds here I'm not sure why it's taking this long ah, there we go and again it's asking me if I want to activate this I do want to activate it so I click on that and you would notice now I have a new team in my team page here but if I go to my website voila just with a couple of clicks I have a completely new look and feel but my content hasn't changed much other than you would notice that Cole Harbor and Yale Town was supposed to be under Vancouver but now it's showing up by itself so 
when you change themes, it's not 100% of the time that it will not mess up your content. Okay, as you can see in this case, my my Cole Harbor and Yale Town, which was under the drop down menu for Vancouver, is no longer a drop down menu. Okay, so it's not always 100% you will get it right and you have to go back and do a few changes to get it back to the way you want to. But you can see how quickly I have changed the team. And there are many, many, many teams out there that are actually very, very good and they are somewhere between you know fifty dollars to two hundred dollars. And if you find a team that works very well for you, you can go hire a designer for I don't know a couple of grand or you can just buy a team for a couple of hundred dollars and develop your website that way, right? And there are many teams, by the way, which are also free, which are also very good. Uh, the team that we use on our website, uh, smallbusinesscenter.com, is free. I haven't paid for that. Uh, so there are several teams out there that are very good, that are free, and there are teams that, are, that will cost you some money, which are also free. So that's pretty much it for our webinar today. So I've shown you how to install WordPress. I've shown you how to add pages and posts. I have shown you how to copy content if you don't want to write it. And I've shown you how to add plugins and themes to extend your, um, your website. So I'm going to open it up for questions and we already have a first question. Can you cover the SEO in another webinar? Uh, Don, do you mean the SEO plugin or do you mean SEO in general? Um, I will I'll, I'll answer both questions for you. We will be doing a webinar in the future about search engine optimization as a standalone topic. Uh, we may cover some plugins in there. I'm not quite sure about that right now. We may or we may not. Uh, but the plugin that we use, just so that you know, the plugin that we used for ourselves is called SEO by... I think it's SEO by Yoast, if I can remember the spelling correctly. Let me see what comes up. Um, oops, I'm in the wrong place. I'm under Teams. I need to be under Plugins. Sorry for that. Let's go under Plugins and search for that. Right, so the one we use on our website is WordPress SEO by Yoast. This is the one I'm using. All you have to do is install that the way I've just shown you how to install um, Contact Form 7, and you can install it the same way. Uh, as far as covering the SEO topic, uh, as I said, we may cover that uh, as a WordPress, but we'll definitely do a webinar on SEO in general. Okay, any other questions? Was this webinar helpful? Any comments? Uh, I know there were some issues with the audio and the template not matching up, but apologies for that. Uh, Don, okay, so let me, the Don, Don is asking me if, where do you paste the SEO plugin? So let me show you how to do that. Let me go back to my dashboard again. Right, so you will go under plugins when you're in your dashboard you will go under add new and you will say SEO by Yoast Oops. and search for the plugin. The first one that comes is, is WordPress SEO by Yoast. You click on install now. It asks you if you want to install the plugin. You say yes or okay rather and then it asks you for your uh, FTP information and then once it's downloaded you can say whether you want to activate the plugin or not and I say yes and my plugin is now activated so I also now have oops let me just dismiss this I also have a WordPress by uh, WordPress SEO and I can click on the settings on that and I can set it up and again this is a bit more complicated so for the interest of time I'm not going to go through that uh, but this is how you add um, the SEO in your on your website. Thank you Robert really appreciate that. When is the next one? Uh, Robert we do a webinar every week on a Thursday uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific time. The time may be different for you so it's 11 a.m. Pacific time. If you go to our website a smallbusinesscenter.com 
on the right hand side you will notice all of our free webinars that are coming in next week we're going to do a webinar on publicity on how to get free or low cost publicity on July 12th we are going to have a guest uh, uh, presenter she's going to talk about uh, how to make video content for your website or blog so it's continuing on the theme of today and then continuing on the same theme on July 19th is blog writing workshop we are going to again have a very very good guest presenter for that he is going to tell us how to come up with content and how to write good marketable content so if you guys are interested in that go ahead and register for that for those of you who are new let me just give you a very quick spiel on what a small business center is um, we are a resource website designed to create and help entrepreneurs start build and grow their companies and every Thursday we do a webinar which is free for entrepreneurs you have to be a member and the membership is free as well you have to be a member to attend these uh, webinars so simply register as a member which is free and then uh, register for any of the webinars that you're interested in in joining Uh, Maria, yes, we will have, assuming that I have been able to record this properly, I will upload the recording of this webinar within 24 hours. So it will be available by tomorrow afternoon-ish. And as a, as a member, you can then go back. So when you are on our web page, Small Business Center, these are our upcoming webinar. When you click on Archived Webinar, it will be in this area. So right now you see the title already there, but if you go there, it won't have the recording. And I will upload the recording if it was done properly in this area uh, again you have to be a member to be able to view it but once you become a member excuse me it will be available for you to be able to view it for free um, so yeah go ahead and become a member and if it was done properly I will have it uploaded within 24 hours thank you Dawn for for your comment she said it's a fantastic service you're very welcome I hope uh, it was useful thank you again to you Maria as well um, I do ask that if you have any um, recommendations you know what kind of webinars you guys want to see please let me know um, and if you know anybody who would like to do a webinar if you want to do a webinar as long as it's a business a small business topic we would be happy to have you come and do a webinar for us the only things we ask for well as I said it has to be on a small business topic it also have to be free of sales pitch we don't like any sales pitch that doesn't mean that you cannot introduce yourself you can introduce yourself and you can provide your contact information in case somebody wants to do business with you but the webinar itself is not a sales pitch and on that the number three is that you have to be able to provide content that people can use um, quickly and immediately there has to be actionable content Thank you, Caroline, uh, Carolyn, uh, for your comment as well. Appreciate that. I'm glad that all of you liked the comment, uh, liked the webinar. We had uh, over 150 people registered for the webinar, so I'm not sure how many people showed up. I hope a lot of you are here and liked it. Any other questions, please let me know. Um, officially, the webinar is over, so if you need to leave, that's fine. Um, but I will hang out just for a few more seconds if, to see if there are any other questions. And if there are, then I will uh, answer them. If you have a question after the webinar, feel free to email us. We would be happy to answer the questions there. If you want to comment on our Facebook page, you can do that as well. Uh, here's the information for our uh, Facebook and Twitter. You can, uh, you can ask questions there as well.